So fluid dynamics, a fluid is something that in vernacular behaves approximately like a liquid. And um, like an air. And uh, then the fluid dynamics is the equations or the description of how fluid flows. So for instance, one might ask, why do eddies form in streams? Or uh, when, um, how do come airplanes fly? Uh, or how come heat moves from down in the bottom, of, down in the center of the earth up to the crust? Or actually, I guess it's up in the crust that they have the convection layer, so, or in the atmosphere. So that's what fluid dynamics is. So it has a lot of applications in many different types of sciences? It, it has applications in many different types of sciences. So if you want to understand how blood flows through the heart, understand fluid dynamics. And also, it shows up in similarities to equations. So for instance, uh, in some fluids carry magnetic fields. So there's a whole field called magnetohydrodynamics where you use electricity and magnetism and fluid dynamics together. And that describes a lot, for instance, how the surface of the sun and the, plat the corona of the sun behave. Or in galaxies, how uh, magnetic fields permeate through galaxies or even just coming out of black holes, for instance. So it shows up everywhere. And it's really, really hard, too. It's just, it's just awesomely hard. It's just like awesomely, awesomely hard. <laughs> Is the sun magnetic? This is kind of a tangential yeah. question. Yeah, uh-huh. has a magnetic field. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And uh, so if you pull up some videos of astronomers have taken of the sun, you'll see loops of ejecta stuff coming out of the sun that loops down and comes around. And typically, that will be following magnetic field lines. That is really interesting. It's very interesting, yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, so what does fluid dynamics have to do with vortices? So vortices are ro rotating fluid, in an essence. So they're, a f they're an aspect of how fluids can flow, and they sometimes are very, provide great uh, interest, and they can describe certain fluid behavior. So, for instance, a tornado would be an example of a vortex, um, typically. A hurricane is an example of a vortex. Um, vortices are very important for how airplanes fly. And in, in what sense? So vortices form in fluid dynamics when something starts rotating. They're, they are rotating fluid. And there are very, there are kind of two kinds of vortices. There's the kind of vortex you can, I mean, two extreme kinds. There's <laughs> the kind of vortex you can make if you put, take a bucket of water, and put it on a, I'm not really watching myself, so I'm not even going to, you know, anybody watching this is going to be like, why are okay. we even showing him? <laughs> um, uh, you take a bucket of water and put it on a turntable or something that goes around fast, and it will spin. Okay. And so the water and the bucket will all spin together eventually. Once it all gets going, it'll all spin together. And that's kind of like a solid body vortex. The whole thing is moving okay. at the same angular velocity. A more common type of vortex, like a tornado or a hurricane or something, is um, where the the, uh, the the vortex is rotating, but the outer stuff is not rotating at the same speed as the inner stuff. It's going around and around, but it's not rotating at the same speed. And um, you know, it's really cool is a vortex meter in water. Will these see the blackboard if I draw on the blackboard? Let's see if we can oh, see it. See. Yeah. OK, so let's draw a vortex meter. This is actually Here. really great to know. So you can make <laughs> a vortex meter by taking, say, a wine cork. And put, can you see that? Yes, OK. Not enough, <laughs> but OK, we'll do it. Put some kind of arrow, like a needle on the top, something very small on the top. Okay. And then put fins on this thing, say four fins, one at each, at 90 degrees to each other. I won't try to draw the back one. Oh, kind of kind of like a cross? Like kind of like a cross. And have it weighted so that it, you set this in water. And um, 
this is like a rotation meter. It will tell you if the water is rotating. Because if the water is rotating, this thing will rotate. The water will rotate around and pull it around. And so, and then you just measure like how many times it spins or something in order to get so quantitative So, to measurement. very large extent, if this were infinitesimally small and responded instantaneously, this would measure the vorticity, the vorticity of a particular point in the water. So if it's spinning, you have vorticity, and if it's not spinning, you don't. Okay. All right. It's interesting. I didn't know that. And just to continue along those lines, a something like a tornado or a whirlpool, the water going down your bathtub drain, mm -hmm. if you put this meter outside, away from the center of it, it won't spin. There's no, vorti there's no vorticity on most of a tornado. Interesting. It's only in the center where yeah. you'll find yes. these properties. This vorticity. Huh. Okay. Would you, okay, um, how would you classify a smoke ring? Like, is that a type of vortex? Yes. Okay. So, vorte vo so vortices in, in fluids have very, some very particular properties, which is why they're so often studied. And one of them is, so if you think of a tornado, and it's this, co or a whirlpool, you know, whirlpool draining out of something, there's this long column of stuff swirling around. Uh -huh. And um, the center has, has real rotation, and then the outside is going around, but if you put one of these meters in it, it won't spin around. The meter itself will go around, but the needle will point in the same direction the whole time. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely interesting. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's cool. So, um, so a line of vortex in a fluid, uh, when it reaches steady state, can't end in the fluid. It has to either end. It has to either close in on itself, or it'll end in the air. Like if you're water swirling the vortex will end in the air. The vortex, you'll never see just in water some isolated vortex and then water. So, like yeah. when your bathtub is draining, it's it's like the tornado-looking thing that you'll sometimes yep. see? the whirlpool. The will we'll be, one end will be on the drain and the other end will be in the air. Okay. And it'll never, like, be one end in the drain and the other end halfway up the tub. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, I mean. So, there are kind of two ways to have a line of vortex not end in the fluid. One is to have it end on the boundary of the fluid, like if you have water, you can have it. Or another great one that you can find videos of on YouTube. I mean, it's so cool. This is fluid dynamics, it's just such an awesome field. So if you, they have, there are videos of uh, a jet engine starts up and it's the turbofan is spinning and it creates a vortex of air. And you can often see, if the conditions are right, there's moisture in the air or something, you'll see the vortex, and it will immediately dive down and hit the ground and stop on the ground. It won't just sit there and sort of dangle out of the air <laughs> right. like a bolt of lightning. So one way is to have the vortex end on the ground. And, and the yeah. other way is to have it close in on itself, like a snake biting its tail. Okay, and that's So when you that's get... a vortex ring. Okay. And so vortex ring and something like a, a typical smoke ring if you had a way of putting one of these vortex meters in it, you would see that, let's draw it. So, so if we looked, if we took a slice, I'll draw it bigger this time so we can actually see it. Okay. So if we cut a piece of, like a vortex ring looks like a donut. Right. So if we took a slice through a piece of it, we would see concentric circles of fluid motion, say they're all going like that, around and around. And this is a cross section, like if you laid it down if, sideways. So imagine that the vortex, the smoke ring, is co coming out of the board, okay. going back in the board over here. Oop, I'm going around. Uh oh. <laughs> Did we stop filming? No, we're good. Okay. It's still filming. But... Ah. Okay. okay, so imagine that the vortex ring 
draw it over here. So the other part of the ring would be over here. Oh, okay. And then this. And then it connects through the back. And so imagine that you have a great big donut that's mm -hmm. coming out of the board here and then going back in the board there, and you've just sliced it down this way. Right, so this is the cross section. This is the cross section. So a vortex ring, what's interesting about a vortex ring, one of the things is, unlike say just a sound wave, the air molecules are really going around. They're actually going oh. around and around. It's not like a sound wave where the air molecules don't move very far. They just, there's a pressure, you know, increase in pressure and then, then the, they push on the next molecules, but they don't really go very far. If you toss a bottle out in the ocean, you know, and it goes in the waves, but it doesn't really, it doesn't move with the waves. Vortices, there's actually fluid motion, like a tornado sucks up houses. I mean, you just get a video of a tornado online, and it's like sucking up houses and whipping them around. Right, so it's clearly moving the material. Moving stuff, right? Um, so it's the same with a, so the vortex ring is actually moving the air, and it's going around. But if you had a way of taking that vortex meter and sticking it right here, it would go around with the air, but the arrow would point the same way. It wouldn't go around. So, so it has the same properties of like a tornado. It does, yes. Yes. And, and just to be confusing, they're called <laughs> ear rotational vortices. Ear rotational vortices? Yeah, right. Hmm. Because you think, well, it's a vortex, it's rotating. No, no, no. Rotational vortices are typically the ones where they're all moving like a solid body. But vortex rings, like smoke rings, are ear rotational because if you put your vortex meter here, your rotational meter, outside of the center, it will go around and around like this. Huh. Only if you put it in the center will it actually spin. The center is, the, the core of it is different from out here. Okay. Well, um, so I don't, I don't know how much you know about, um, you know, your rotational vortices specifically. <laughs> okay. Um, but I was wondering if you knew anything about how the composition of a substance will affect the behavior of these types of vortices. Uh... Wow, not a lot. I would definitely have to look that up. So in general, the vortex, the core has a lower pressure than the rest of the vortex. So okay. gradually the, pour, the pressure tends to decrease as you go in. So clearly in gases like air, that would play a bigger role. But Ah, uh, you, can you ask me more specific questions? Because I might know more specific questions, answers. Well, I mean, essentially what we're doing with our experiment is we're testing different types of materials that mm -hmm. are forming smoke rings. Aha. Uh -huh. So fog machine fluid-based uh, vortices versus dry ice-based vortices. And um, we that's sort of... Yeah, we attempted to do a smoke one, but it just never got thick enough with the, like, with the smoke that we tried. Okay. So. so we were just wondering whether you had any insight on that. I mean, clearly we're going to discover more about it because yeah. that's part of our experiment. But. So what we know with smoke rings is that some of the material that formed the smoke ring is going along, is moving along. Right. Like you're wondering, you form the smoke ring, well, one kind of gas, one could, like if you make it out of smoke, is it going to expand more quickly than if you make it out of dry ice? Right, or... I don't know the answer like, to that. We've seen some videos. We actually have a cool video um, on our computers um, where the two, the two um, smoke rings go like, inside each other, and they're made out of bubbles. And we're wondering whether the behavior of vortices together affects, like... we. we it was just kind of an um, idle question. This sort of thing. Like they'll go through each other. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> okay. So that's a, what was that material? Uh, that I, was I not really an know. actual video. There's a video, like oh. a, a real video close to the end. Uh -huh. that has someone lying on the bottom of an ocean, presumably. And, it was just bubbles. and, and there's bubbles. Right. And he blows a bubble ring and then another one and it goes through. Yeah. Through and through and through. Uh-huh. Is it on this video, and Robin? Or you, yeah, it's the last one. Do you know what's going do you understand what's going on there? No, that's kind of why we were asking, because uh, 
so I can't, I can give you a little.